Let us now begin our worship. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom like the crocus. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. Let us walk in the light of the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have made us in all things to serve you. Now prepare the world for your rule. Come quickly to save us so that wars and violence shall end and your children may live in peace honoring one another with justice and love. Through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Let us pray. Holy God, our hope and strength, by the power of your Spirit, prepare the way in our hearts for the coming of your word, so that we may see the glorious signs of your promise fulfilled. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The first lesson is from the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. They heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers he will strike your head and you will strike his heel and to the man he said because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten of the tree about which I commanded you you shall not eat of it cursed is the ground because of you in toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you and you shall eat the plants of the field by the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread until you return to the ground. For out of it you are taken. You are the dust, and to dust you shall return. Here ends the lesson.
second lesson is from the book of Genesis. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and, and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you and I will, ma and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves because you've obeyed my voice. Here ends the lesson. The third lesson is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 6 and 7. 
The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders. And he is a wonderful count and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. From Isaiah 11, verses 1 through 4 and 6 through 9. A shoot shall come out of the stump of Jesse, a branch shall grow out of his roots. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of the counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight shall be in fear of the Lord, but with the righteousness. He shall judge the poor and decide the equality for the meek of the earth. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on my holy mountain, for the earth will be full of knowledge as the Lord covers the sea.
The fifth lesson is from Luke 1, verses 26 through 35 and verse 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your room and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her.
The sixth lesson is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration. <coughs> this was the first <coughs> This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there is no place for them in the inn. Here ends the lesson. The seventh lesson is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 8 through 16. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth a peace among those whom he favors. When the angel had left him and gone to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in a manger. Here ends this lesson.
The eighth lesson is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born the king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for it has been written by the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Here ends the lesson.
The ninth lesson is from John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into him, being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Here ends this lesson. Well, before we have our pastoral prayer and Lord's Prayer and our offering, I just want to thank our leaders today. They have done such a great job. Judy and the choir, Rain and John with the candle lighting, our youth, Leslie, Jack, Logan, Thomas, Evelyn, London, and Lily. It's just been fantastic. I mean, this is fun as I have seen or heard uh, from, from top to bottom. And uh, we are grateful as, as a congregation and really want you to know this. Uh, it, is a, it is a gift f uh, from you to us to help us focus more and more on the coming of Christ into the world. It's a wonderful, wonderful gift. Uh, the work that you've put into this is amazing to me and to us, the rehearsals, everything. So just know our gratitude and our joy. Let us now pray. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, God of mystery and might. We praise and worship you. For you came in silence while all lay sleeping to enter our world as a child of humble birth. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, born of your handmaid, Mary. In his face, we behold your glory. For in his life, as in his death, is your gift of salvation. By your spirit, make our hearts burn with thanksgiving that we may give as we have received. Let our whole lives be gifts of praise to you. God of love and peace, in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now let us pray the prayer Jesus taught by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us remember the words of scripture, how it is more blessed to give than to receive. Let us give our morning offering.
Let us pray. Great God of power, we praise you for Jesus Christ who came to save us from our sins. We thank you for the hope of the prophets, the song of the angels, and the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. We thank you that in Jesus you became flesh and dwelt among us, sharing human hurts and pleasures. We give you thanks, dear God, for the food that we are about to receive. Glory to you for your grace-filled love. Glory to you, eternal God, through Jesus Christ, Lord of lords and King of kings, now and forever. And grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you this day and all days. Amen. <laughs>